Ooh, yeah, it's the Titan. No, no, that's not my name. Hey, what's everybody? What's good, everybody? This is your man, the Titan Montezzi, and I am here on the exclusive podcast, the best podcast you will get anything wrestling, everything pro wrestling with my man, Conrad. Make sure you guys tune in. Montezzi, Swear City, AVM. Let's get it going, man. What's going on, everybody? This is Jesse Carter over at the Pro Wrestling Shoot Podcast, and every Monday we release new podcast episodes over on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and Google Podcasts. Along with me usually is James Pinard Jr., my co-host. Over on our show, you can catch original segments where our show is actually put together like a show. No, we don't just press play and start recording. We put some deep thought into our shows with our original segments, and right now we are currently doing our What If series. Come and check that out, as well as every Tuesday, on YouTube, we are doing live streams, and if we're not live streaming, we're posting videos with some good content on it. What can you expect from our podcast? Well, they say controversy creates cash. Maybe come and check it out and find out for yourself. Most of our episodes are can't miss. We try to give you the best entertainment possible. Come and check it out. Join our live chats on Tuesdays over on YouTube. Follow us on YouTube at the Pro Wrestling Shoot. Also, you guys can follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitch, and TikTok at the Pro Wrestling Shoot and on Twitter at TPWS Podcast. Once again, come and follow us on all of our social media accounts where we stay active every single day. And also, do not forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel and hop in our live chats. We love to hear your thoughts on anything related to professional wrestling. Folks, welcome to Everything Pro Wrestling. Everything Pro Wrestling is a show by the fans, for the fans. I'm your host, Conrad Cushman. I am running solo right now. Uh, had to leave Derek alone for a second. He's still in the crib. He chilled, watched some of the show. Um, we are going to get ready to review AEW Dynamite. It was their anniversary show. Lots to talk about. Lots to get into. Um, I, I I don't know, man. This is going to be a, a a tough one to 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 get into because there's some drama on the outside. This was supposed to be a special occasion, and here we are. Uh, with that. That being said, though, if you guys could make sure you hit the like button if you're watching live on YouTube. If you're listening on the audio versions, leave us that five star review. Show us some love, man. Always important to get that from you guys. Uh, we're going to get into the intro and then we're going to talk about some of this. All right, all right. What is going on, everybody? If you guys haven't already been here before, thank you for coming to Everything Pro Wrestling. Uh, I've been doing this for a long, long time, and I know you guys know for the most part, if you've been around, if you're like an OG fan of Everything Pro Wrestling, We've almost covered every single Dynamite, and uh, I just want to say thank you to everybody who's been a part of the process, helping us out, just being here all the way through. Um, thank you guys for that. And everybody who's new, thank you as well for uh, joining in with all of this. Uh, you guys are also greatly appreciated. Um, yeah, man, it's been a heck of a ride. Uh, I appreciate everyone who's been here through the good times, the bad. Uh, you guys are the best. Let's see here. <laughs> Positively E, my man E, first one in the house tonight, and he is talking about the Young Ducks. Quack, quack. <laughs> what is good? Um, here comes Chucky. Chucky saying AEW is trash. Charles, you stay on that USA Network and worry about your show, my friend. Uh, Matt Lopez says good evening, everybody. What is good? What is good? Um Deanna's also in the house saying, hey, peeps, what's up, Deanna? Thank you for uh, popping up in here. Um, Deanna said she thought it was a good show minus the ending. We'll get into some of that. BJ, what is good, BJ? BJ said, I've questioned Tony Khan more since AEW has started. Uh, I've questioned Tony Khan more, excuse me, since AEW has started until these last few months. I don't think that result was the move, and I hope this show isn't an example of what next year is going to bring. Yeah, 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 there's some stuff within this, man. Um, let me see here. Yeah, I hope Danielson uh wins the title next week. Uh, it was a good show of ROH Dynamite. 
Um, Sammy got a pass for whatever happened earlier. Maybe the ring work was great, but they are doing some little things that will definitely play out bigger in the long run that uh, I don't think is going to make things better, both on and off the camera. Okay. Personally, he should have been sent home too. Okay. Everybody is going in, man. Everybody's here for the rant. Uh, Conrad, where's Derek? Derek uh, is downstairs, we'll just say. He he was struggling here to uh, to stay with it. He's had a long day. Um, Cray says, AEW tonight was gutta trash. The crowd sucked, and all this backstage stuff is killing AEW in my interest. I guess that's a great first topic to start off with. Um, and if anyone who's been on the podcast before that I know, trust, if you guys want to jump in, if you're like, yo, send me the invite, I will do it uh, live on air and I'll try to get you on. If you got something to say, just let me know in the chat, send me a message, hit me up, do something. All right. Um, AEW has been getting a lot of tough criticism. Some of it fair, some of it not fair, in my opinion, with uh, everything that's going on. We have to, this is how I frame it, in my mind, at least right now. Triple H is the new kid on the block. And I know I'm mentioning WWE, but Triple H has all the fanfare right now. He's the cool guy. He's the flavor of the month. He's going to have this for a while because it's Triple H. I loved black and gold NXT. The background right now is black and gold. It looks so good because of what Triple H did with that brand. I absolutely like Triple H. I love what he did with that brand. Tony Khan has seemingly fumbled the bag, lost it, and I think he has divided and segmented his audience and not even anything on his behalf. It's more so as a roster, as a group of wrestlers, they've done that. The whole media scrum, brawl, melee, whatever we're going to title this. I don't even know what it's called, but CM Punk and the Elite. It feels so weird to have both of those guys, or or, excuse me, CM Punk and the Elite as uh, those guys being scrubbed from the shows. Like We didn't see too many highlights from them. Some of the biggest moments involve CM Punk, Kenny Omega, and the Young Bucks in these first three years. It's very weird. And no matter what anyone says, the impact of uh, all of those guys, it matters. Truly, it matters. Um, I, I don't know what's the, the best answer for, for what Tony Khan can do because it's not Tony Khan's fault, either with a lot of this stuff. Triple H sent feelers over. Now, do I believe AEW's done the same thing? Yes. I'm going to say it. I don't care if you're communicating through someone else. You're talking to someone that you know you shouldn't be talking to. Whatever. I don't really care. It's wrestling. I I have a whole argument over the independent contractor thing. You guys, if you know me, you've talked to me. I feel a different way about independent contractors. I really feel like they should be allowed to just go and do whatever they want. Can you have contracts? Yes, but you can't treat them like they're employees. I get it. Wrestling makes that a fine line to walk. Now, Triple H sending people out like, hey, would you be interested in coming back? That was wrong because that caused a lot of turmoil in the locker room. And, oh, WWE is interested in me again. Maybe they'll offer me the big bag. Maybe I could go back there and do yada, yada, yada. And people see how Cody's been treated. This is why I always said the way Cody Rhodes is treated in WWE is very, very important. Because if there are people that Triple H wants... Even if it was the Vince and Bruce reign, if there were people that they wanted, they would all they would have to do is come on over, do your thing, and sign them. What ended up happening? Exactly what I've said so far. Cody's been treated great. Cody's friends with people like Sammy Guevara. He's friends with so many of the AEW wrestlers. He knows some of the contracts, I bet. He could be the person who opens the floodgate and brings people over to the WWE. It's that simple. And there's people trying to get out of their contracts, I would imagine. If you're locked in the Tony Khan's deal for two to three years, why hang around, bro? Why not do something controversial? More on that later on. I have it in the, when we talk about the match, we're going to get into that. Because I saw this later than everybody else. And it's just not going to happen. Like, Tony doesn't want to release anybody because he signed you for that amount of time. He wants you to do the work. He's not going to let people just go to WWE to end him. You know what I mean? That does, it's a it's a, it's a, a weird situation. But do you want someone hanging around who's 
who's causing problems and issues with things? Probably not as well. I don't know. It's still very, very weird. Very, very weird with everything that's going on. And I'm going to kind of defer to the chat. Please let me know your thoughts on all of this uh, with Tony Khan, AEW. Like towards the end, I want you guys to think about this. What are your overall feelings for AEW? This was an anniversary show, and I feel like we are plagued with nothing but the the bad shit. I saw a video that just came out by uh, Brian Zane today, Wrestling With Regret. It was the top best eight moments and the top, or excuse me, the top eight worst moments in AEW for the past three years. Did you know that the top eight worst moments had double the views than the one that was the best when I looked at it 10 hours ago? That was insane to me instantly. I was just like, oh, that's interesting that more people are delving onto the negativity for AEW. And I don't know what caused it. I don't know. How do you fix this? Someone tell me. Because to me, it seems like there's a lot of uh, jadedness and you're going to break up some of this roster. What do you do? Because there, there's good and bad all around with this. The yin and the yang of pro wrestling. Um, let's get into some of this. Uh, Deanna says, Tony Khan needs uh, to help someone get control of things. I don't know who, but someone. Yeah, I don't know what's the best answer. I've seen people say Tony Khan needs to hire a creative writer, too, for, for the shows. I don't know. What's the best answer for a lot of this? And I'm not complaining. I'm just kind of trying to frame everything and put it into perspective. BJ comes in. He says, how, how, how can you know the tweet stuff that's gone out and still let Andrade and Sammy get close enough to each other to fight? That much is on Tony. He had uh, to shoulder some blame. BJ, honestly, too, though, if I'm a grown man and I wanted to fight you at work, there's really not too much that would stop it, you know? If you message someone and said, where is he at? Oh, he's by this door? Yeah, but there's security waiting over here. He's got friends within the company. They're, they would tell him, like, yeah, they're going to try and talk to you and bring you into Tony's office right away. They can talk to each other and help each other out. We don't know how that locker room situation is. It could be really bad back there now. And that's the type of crap that Tony's going to have to deal with. On letting that transpire after what uh, went down for the world to see uh, the last two to three days, yeah, yeah, but you can't stop all of that either. Uh, Matt Lopez says, Tony should have had Sammy and Andrade have a sit down and squashed up before we had another incident. But Matt, if they didn't want to, that could have happened on site. The moment he walked in, he was like, yo, I'm about to go find him. We don't know. We don't know the the execs about it. I, I, I told someone earlier, I'm a grown man. If I wanted to really get into a fight with somebody, like if it was like, okay, I want to fight this person. I know where it is, the location, everything. I'm pretty sure it's going to happen no matter what. If that's what Andrade set out to do, and rumor has it, he wants to go away. What are you supposed to do? What are you supposed to do? Uh, shout out to Hubbard Wrestling Weekly. Shout out to my man, Sean Hubbard, my uh, fellow podcaster on Clash of the Podcast every Monday, 6.05. You guys can catch us. Uh, definitely, definitely proud of my brother. Thank you for joining us. Uh, Deanna said, rumor I saw that today was Khan brought out Punk's contract, but is bought out Punk's contract, but is paying medical. He has to because he got injured in his ring. Uh, Deanna said, I love the company, but they need to get control of things. I saw a quote on Reddit that sums up my recent feelings towards AEW lately. I didn't know entertainment was supposed to be this tiring. Ooh. Uh, I run Wednesday. Now screw AEW. Come on, Chuckaroo. Uh, this dude has become an iron fist uh, on the talent late. Or excuse me. This dude has become an iron fist on the talent lately. Lay low, be a boss. In time, you can loosen back up with some people. Nelson Rivera in the house. was good, Nelson? Appreciate you coming in here, my brother. Uh, there's a lot. There's a lot to talk about within this. We're going to, I'll try to circle back to this at the end. If you guys want to talk more about the whole AEW, Andrade, Sammy, Punk, Elite stuff, we can get into that towards the end. Uh, sorry, I didn't mean to press the middle finger. I thought that was just your trademark, bro. I thought that was your trademark when you come in. <laughs> no, I'm happy you're in here, bro. Hope things are well, dude. I haven't talked to you in a minute. Uh, let's, let's kick things off with, uh, oh, BJ said one more thing before we start the show off here. Uh, it just feels like the workers feel they can do whatever they want with no, uh, real repercussions. Yeah. It's, uh, sadly, until someone starts getting fired and stuff, you don't know how, how these situations are going to roll. And we may end up seeing that, uh, sooner rather than later as well. So it's what it is, right? 
It's what it is. Now, let's get into this anniversary show uh, overall when it comes to AEW. Uh, we're going to cut some of the fluff out tonight. I'm going to try and keep it so that you guys get your thoughts in because it's about you tonight as well. Uh, promo code EPW show. If you guys go to powerslam.tv, you get one free month of independent pro wrestling on us. Uh, make sure you guys put that promo code in and it lets them know that you guys are watching everything pro wrestling. They gave us a free code. Uh, that's a great way to help support EPW. Also in the link description down below, we do have some uh, great merch made by Rob and Derek. Uh, make sure you guys check that out. Should we ever get some new stuff? I need you guys to harass them, you know, like get on their case, tell them we want new merch. Uh, they're playing around. I'm sick of it. So yeah, get on them and tell them new merch. We want it because I've been wanting it. Um, let's see. Uh, Matt Lopez, I think Sammy needs to be benched for a bit. Uh, this is the second confrontation in the last two months. Do we remember those Sasha Bank comments? Oh, my goodness. Tale of two hours with this show. Started out hot, but ended like a wet fart, in my opinion. How how things going? Uh, we have a year left of AEW before the plug is pulled. I, I don't I don't think it's going to be like that. I think he needs to get things in order, but I don't think it's uh, that bad for him, at least in my opinion. Uh, so let's get into the opening contest, which was MJF versus Wheeler Yuta. Uh, definitely different styles here. MJF is more of a promo guy, great wrestler in the ring. We got Wheeler Yuta, a mat technician. Uh, this one, we started off with some arrogance from MJF and Yuta using his wrestling holds. Uh, sunset flip into multiple pinfall attempts had the fans going crazy for it tonight. Uh, MJF goes for an attempted tombstone off the second rope, but he gets clapped by the boots. I just like to say that I laughed when they said that on commentary. He's getting clapped by the boots. Um, Yuta's able to get out, he hits a hurricanrana. It felt like watching some classic 96 uh cruiserweight action on Nitro. Uh, MJF, though, is able to lock on salt of the earth. Yuta's almost at the ropes, but MJF rolls through bridges with the arm. Yuta has nowhere to go but to tap out. I thought it was uh, very well done. And after the match, I thought it was really cool because Yuta extends his hand to MJF. He looks like he may want to shake it. He may not. And what happens? But Lee Moriarty comes from behind and blasts Wheeler Yuta. Uh, he's on his way to trying to become that ROH pure champion. He puts a stomp down on him, and Stokely Hathaway shows up eating an apple. I don't know what this uh, this eating the apple stuff is, but whatever. He's eating the apple. He gives MJF the dynamite diamond ring and says, hit him. And out comes Regal from behind, and Regal puts on the brass knuckles, chase off everybody. MJF and Regal kind of have a look at each other. It was It was different. It was different for that opening contest. Um, I thought it was a good match, though. I enjoyed that one a lot, like uh, Rob had mentioned. Uh, MJF put on a good match. Bobby, you lacking. <laughs> uh, the opening match was a banger. MJF winning clean is shocking, Matt Lopez says. Uh, Nelson said submission. Uh, it's all about honor uh, to start a good message in the night. Um, this was match of the night for me, BJ says. The firm and MJF kind of already miscommunicating. Could be, could be. Uh, DS in the chat. I think that's Derek. Classic match. The brass knuckles of a king. Regal. Brass knuckles over the diamond ring. You guys are you guys are foul for that. Um, yeah, yeah. It's always good. It's always good to see uh, Regal bust out the brass knuckles. Great gimmick for him always. And I like that they had him pull those out. Like he was about to go in there and have to put a beat down on somebody. Where was the rest of the Blackpool Combat Club? Come on now. Can't leave my man Yuta out there hung out to dry like that. Um, after that, we get a video package kind of communicating the whole Jericho Appreciation Society, Garcia, Brian storyline to set everything up. And then we get a backstage promo from the JAS and Sammy. Um, it gets it, Sammy showed up on screen and talked, and he got some pretty loud heat. Like you could hear it from the crowd. They were pissed at him. Um and that's when I finally realized. So BJ had mentioned it. So here, let me break this down for you guys and how this always works with me. I'm preparing before the show starts. I prepare after the show and during the show. 
I am missing a lot of stuff that happens in between that time, whether it's on Twitter, something else. Usually Matt Lopez, Eric, Rob, uh, Casey, Sick, people from XGW. There's always somebody trying to show some love to uh, what's going on with the wrestling stuff. So they usually will send me a DM saying like, yo, check this out. Did you see this? And I appreciate that. And B-Boy Skyline, too. Let me show him some love as well. I know he's in the city right now. So we always try to make sure that we're, we're up to date when we're doing all of this. And BJ had put up a comment. He was like, oh, what's this? And then I was like, wait, what are you talking about? And he said, oh, they advertised the match still with Ten and Andrade for Rampage, but there's been a change made to it. Tony Khan announced earlier today that that match is being changed to Ten of the Dark Order is going to get a trios match. More on that later in Rampage. But here's what we get. I go to look and I'm like, what's going on? TMZ is reporting that Andrade and Sammy Guevara were involved in a backstage altercation before Dynamite. Punches were thrown and Andrade was sent home to all uh, to all the wait to all the adults. I don't know what that is. Who said quitting soft and then tweet them away. Uh, this is why Tony Khan uh, needs to put a lid on it. I mean, yeah, a lot of people were saying that. Um, I, I guess, yeah, this is what it is, man. I, I think I copied that from Sala Monster. The Tony Khan needs to put a lid on it is 100% correct, man. This is this is a terrible situation for anyone who's an AEW fan. And for those who are preying on AEW's downfall, like, dude, F off. Because I don't understand why you would want, like, one company to be on top again. We've went through that for 20 years, and it was not fun for all of those 20 years. Think about it. There are some kids who never even knew what WCW was or knew of USWA or or wherever your favorite other wrestling company was, ECW even at this point. They don't know about that. Why would you want just one wrestling company? That's the overall view. This stuff right here, this is some bullshiggity going on with Andrade. If Andrade wants out, Tony, let him go. Just let him go. If if this is what's going to be going on, and here's the difference with Punk and the Elite. I feel like with Punk and the Elite, this was stuff brewing for a while, and Tony could have probably prevented it with some talking, trying to fix this. It looks like somebody fumbled the bag. In this situation, though, like BJ had said, you knew about this, bro. They knew. You just had that locker room meeting. This is the biggest F you to all of them. All of them. And I'm sure tonight's finish, I saw people were mad about it. Maybe it plays into Jericho and, and this storyline, but it sends a bad message to the locker room with uh, what's happening. It sends a very bad message to the locker room saying, you know what? It's okay. If you're not the aggressor, this is what's going to happen. And this this is bad. This is bad. Because we're spending more time tonight talking about this than the matches that we're on. Why is that? It shouldn't be that way. Like Ring of Elite or All Elite Honor. At this point, maybe they don't even want the Ring of Honor show. I don't know. But these people are about to fumble the bag. Tony Khan is trying to invest in two different promotions for you guys. And you guys are just, you're hurting yourselves. I don't get it. I don't get it. Stay away from people. Mediate these things. I I don't know what's the answer here. I don't know how you just don't tolerate this mess. It's got to stop. It's got to stop. Dynamite in two weeks will be uh, on Tuesday up against NXT. What world are we living in because they don't uh, play baseball? I guess so. Should have backhanded him like he did Sting. Yeah, that was a good Regal clip, bro. (laughs) Uh, Sammy seemed uncomfortable. He did. He did. Uh, There was a lot of bleed over with ROH for it being an AEW anniversary show. Yeah, BJ, you're right. Uh, I spit in the face of people who don't like to be cool. Uh, Sammy with that get your ass off my TV heat. Uh, Sammy got lots of heat tonight. Andrade is going to go back to WWE. Hey, that's what he wants. Let him. Andrade and Sammy need to chill out on Twitter. Yeah, they basically, I don't even want to get into all that. They started talking about each other. There were subliminal tweets. Then someone said the name, and then they were going at it. Uh, Tony Schiavone is talent relations. What did he do? We don't know, Deanna. I don't know if he gets to just speak to Tony. Maybe he advises Tony like, hey, this is a situation. This is what I think we should do. 
maybe maybe Tony's the reason why they're kind of chilling out on some of the stuff too because okay yeah I, I don't know this could be lawsuit city central if people are going to start doing this stuff especially if it sets a precedent with the whole punk and elite thing we were supposed to be cele- celebrating three years of AEW, yet it's still about the drama uh they are teasing a possible ROH pay-per-view or backdoor ROH TV pilot. I would be down for that. ROH to New York City, baby. They deserve a show. Said it for you, Matt Lopez. B- BJ just nailed it, though. We're supposed to be celebrating three years of AEW, three years of like covering this. I should be feeling good right now. And instead, I feel like garbage because there's no CM Punk. There's no Elite, Andrade, Sammy Guevara. We're on here talking about Triple H. We're talking about WWE. All the wrong things are in place. And yes, I know I could control that. But this is what the reality of the situation is, in my opinion. It's what it is. It's just frustrating as a fan right now. I read a quote from Tony earlier that said WB is, uh, that's Warner Brothers, is determining a TV deal based on the ROH pay-per-view successes. I feel like that statement alone is a bad sign for that TV deal. The pay-per-views have been pretty successful. They've been like some of the highest Ring of Honor pay-per-views. So if they're basing, it depends on what they're basing it off of. Um, And it depends, what is Ring of Honor supposed to be? Is it a secondary promotion? Is it a farm league there's many questions that have to be answered, and I fear Tony could burn himself out on some of that too. Hence, why we brought up the whole "does he need writers" thing. Maybe, maybe it wouldn't. I don't think it would hurt to have a consultant with you on some of these shows. Um, let me see here. Uh, BJ comes in once those rosters are sorted. What is uh, ROH? Is what the C show? Is he only booking uh, for a one-time deal? We don't know. We don't know. We should be celebrating AEW being on three years and uh, going on their fourth. Not all this BS. TK has Twitter fingers and has a big mouth as well. He spends too much time thinking about WWE. So if the boss is like drama, what do we expect? Yeah. So Tony Khan's up front with it and he's out there with it. But Triple H is backdoor too, bro. Like, don't let this whole like he's the greatest. He's making WWE better fool you. This he kind of started some of this stuff too for them. Like he created some problems for them. And I know I'm not Mr. Triple H. Like I am not his biggest fan from his in-ring stuff. I told you I love NXT Triple H, but Triple H before that, I got I got some stuff to say, and it's not good. Um, and, and that and it just depends on what you believe and what you think of some of it. Uh Deanna said, worry about your own house instead of what someone else is doing, but Deanna. Sometimes other people are affecting your house. If you're not watching them, they're going to keep doing it. Do you get what I'm saying? Like, I don't think people understood what he meant when he was talking about Jim Crockett promotions and the stuff Vince McMahon would do. For example, Starcade or I think Starcade happened one year. It was supposed to be around Thanksgiving time. And he's Vince McMahon threatened any pay-per-view provider. If you show that show, we will not give you WrestleMania. Now, was he going to do that? No, some of the people didn't comply, but most of them did. And they said, hey, we can't have your pay-per-view on. There is bullying type behaviors that go on behind the scenes with this from business to business standpoint that you can't just take that either. Like that's, you can't, it's, Tony's in a tough spot with all of this. I, I don't envy being Tony Khan at all. You know, I know he's rich. He's got a lot of money, but this wrestling stuff is a headache as well. When you're doing it, it feels good when you do it right, but it's also a pain when it's like this. Uh, ROH is the new WWE version of ECW. Uh, yeah. Triple H is bad, but Vince wasn't like that. <sighs> I don't know what that means, but Triple H is playing the game on AEW right now and they keep falling for it. BJ, you can't control the actions of your roster, though. How are you going to stop 100 to 200 people with all their mess? There's always going to be someone that's not happy. I'm sure there's someone not getting burned on WWE TV that will go to AEW in a heartbeat, you know? Uh, Triple H is just as vicious as Vince, Matt Lopez said. I get it, but some things you can control. Yeah, but you can't. I'm not letting them bully me around. I'm just not. There was also Black Friday. There was... There's a BJ. There's a lot of stories. I could go through all of them one day, if you guys want. It's it's bad news though. All right, it's bad news for them going in. 
Second match on the card, we had Jay Lethal versus Darby Allen tonight. Uh, both men came out to the ring with no one accompanying them. Uh, they went out there, made this about the matchup. It was a one-on-one contest. I thought Jay Lethal looked phenomenal in this. He was moving around that ring very well. Uh, Darby Allen too. He was he was on point tonight. Um, he he Jay Lethal worked on Darby's left knee. Sanjay and Satnam eventually do come out, and uh, Jay Lethal tells them to go to the back. Like he said, we had an agreement. Go to the back, and they kind of look astonished. And I was like, are they breaking this trio up already? And they might be, in my opinion. Uh, Chat, tell me what you think of this. Is Jay Lethal and and his crew like falling apart already? Uh, they trade some pen falls back and forth, but Darby Allen is eventually able to put on that standing figure four pen, the last supper. One, two, three, he gets the win. And following the match, Darby puts out his hand and says, shake my hand. Jay Lethal shakes it. And it represents the code of honor once again. Touche, touche. A lot of Ring of Honor references tonight. I thought it was dope. I like it. We're with it. And they went in and did what they had to do. I just don't know what this means for Jay Lethal. That's the thing that's making me more curious than anything else. Like, what is Jay Lethal going to end up doing here? Um, (laughs) Nelson put up the handshake. Jay was on his game. Darby versus Lethal was good, but damn, the crowd was a little too quiet. Second match is always that tough spot to be in. Um, it, it doesn't always, it's not, like I said, it's not an envious spot either to be the second one on there. Uh, one time for the one time for the Derek. Always got to just share that a little bit. Um, let me see here. Uh, Darby versus Lethal. We saw that. I want AW to succeed. Excuse me. I want AW to succeed, but because if they don't, back to goofy, hokey WWE. Raw is still hokey to me. Jay is better alone. Woo! Well, always got to hit that one time for Derek, just because I know he's uh upset somewhere right now about it. Um. Yeah, yeah. I don't know if that if they're if they're done with lethal. It's gonna I could see a beatdown potentially happening with all of this. Um, the embassy then cut a backstage promo for Brian Cage. They're hyping up that match, and that is the next matchup for us to talk about. It is for the uh TNT championship, Wardlow versus the returning Brian Cage. Where has he been? Man, they forgot all about this dude. Uh and listen, I, I was not on Brian Cage's side for this argument of the whole, like, he was gone, he was off TV, they renewed him, then they said, well, we'll put him in Ring of Honor. I think they were just trying to make things better and happier on both sides. I don't know what the backstage situation was with all that. Whatever. Right now, we got two dudes who are about to go in there, and they delivered, I thought, tonight. Wardlow's hitting her Karanas in the beginning. They were trading chops back and forth. Brian Cage even went for a 619, caught by Wardlow. Cage hits an Alabama slam into a sit-out. Uh, Wardlow's able to deliver that big headbutt in the wind-up clothesline, and he just powerbombed him four times. I love it. I thought Prince Nana looked great on the outside. I really dig Prince Nana as a manager. I have a great Ring of Honor story if I've never told you. Um, at the time, my wife was my girlfriend. We went to a Ring of Honor show far out somewhere kind of on the outskirts of Buffalo. And uh, Prince Nana was at the show. He definitely told us to sit down and shut up. And my wife was like, is he talking to me? And he was just like, girl, sit down and shut up. It is one of my favorite Ring of Honor memories. Prince Nana is the man. Uh, Definitely did that. And I was just, I was just floored by uh, what they ended up doing. Nelson said Wardlow is the man. BJ coming in with the will. Maybe Derek's manscaping. You know what, Deanna? If Derek is manscaping, if he is, he better be using our promo code EPW Show. Go to manscaped.com. Save yourself 20%. Free delivery as well. You guys can get the, the beautiful lawnmower 4.0. They also have the preserver, the reviver. You can get a nose hair trimmer. Nobody likes nose hair. You especially don't want to stick it out. Tis the season. Get that Halloween outfit spiffy. You don't want to have any pubes in the way. Manscapes got you covered. Use our promo code EPW show. And you guys can go from looking like this to smooth as butter. 
So make sure you guys put that in. Who better than Cage? Who better than Canyon? Um, Matt Lopez says we're in the money. Uh, this is a fantastic match, a great big man match. Brian Cage, how many people got suspended that they had to call him onto the show tonight? Joking, of course. That run and jump off uh, the top rope. Yeah, Wardlow definitely hit the Jeff Hardy tonight. That was dope. Uh, the whisper in the wind. Uh, who do you think uh, that Wardlow should face next? I was before Christian got hurt. I thought Christian would be a good opponent for Wardlow. I want Wardlow in there with like a veteran who someone who you could honestly believe could take that championship from him. I just don't know who would be next. They're doing this whole uh, War Joe thing. And they had brought that up before, too. Um, after all the power bombs, the embassy came out to attack Gates of Agony. Everybody's out there. Even Prince Nana jumped in the ring. Samoa Joe comes out to help put the beat down on. The numbers are too much, though. And then who comes out but FTR to make the save? Uh, I like it. I thought it was good. FTR is always uh, dope. Heard they had an amazing match uh, with for the uh, New Japan Tag Titles. Unbelievable. Unbelievable against Aussie Open, man. Definitely find that. Toa Leona. <laughs> Deanna's a fan. FTR and the Embassy seem to have tension at the end of the match. I could be wrong. Yes. Yes, there's going to be a uh, tag title match at uh, Battle of the Belts this weekend. Or, excuse me, this Friday. Uh, Cesaro versus face versus face. Could be, could be. I, I think Claudio would be a good uh, opponent for him. Claudio's not bad. After this, we get a Dr. Britt Baker promo. Yeah, it was there. Talk about put Paige or Soraya, excuse me, in some bubble wrap. All right. All right. Well, what are we doing here? What's, what's the wave? What's the move? Uh, we get into this next matchup. It's Tony Storm, Athena, and Willow Nightingale versus Jamie Hayter, Serena Deeb, and Penelope Ford. Uh, in this one early on, Athena and Penelope are ripping it up in this ring. They are doing flips out tremendous. I thought Athena and Penelope looked really good here. Penelope's kind of been, she's kind of been hitting since she came back. I like it. She's been, she's been on a roll. Uh, I actually would give my props to all of these women in this match. I thought they did a tremendous job here. Willow hit a beautiful spine buster in this match. Willow is so lovable. Like, I don't get how Willow is not signed. TK, if it's not official, I've heard there's some kind of deal, but I think we need an official deal. I need to see the Willow graphic. Who's with me? Like, put Willow on that sign. It is time. It's time. It's time. Uh, after that spine buster on the outside, we see Soraya break up uh, the attempted use of the crutch by Rebel. Uh, Willow hits a gut wrench power bomb on Penelope Ford. And when I say she hit like a, a gut wrench, it, it was bad. It was bad. There was uh there was some jiggity jacked up. Like she landed, she she folded her like an accordion, but I thought it was good. Um Willow gets the win. I like it. I like it. And this is gonna open up the door to a match later on that is announced for Friday. Um, following, we see a brawl with the ladies, and Soraya gets physical with Britt Baker. Couple punches, and she even hit a super kick on Rebel. Soraya is probably going to be in a match is what this tells me. It's just when is the time for it? And maybe they're trying to hold off until full gear. So it's going to be good. Uh, <laughs> Deanna's funny. Uh, Britt Baker, who had her nose broke twice. Uh, sign Willow. Now Cray says Willow is so over. It's time. It's time. It's Conrad. Time, time, time. If I could do the Vader hand, I can't do the Vader finger thing. Like some people can do it. I like I have to hold my hand like that. Like my hand doesn't let that happen. Yeah, good trios match. Good trios match here. Um, and I like that the they they kind of switched up the spot where the women were in too. I know everybody's always like they're in that 930 death spot. Okay, let's switch it up tonight. So good to see that. And I'm happy that the women got some screen time. This was good. This was a positive, I thought, as well for tonight. Um, 
Roosh and Jose the Assistant are backstage with Private Party. They're talking about contract tampering. I know BJ rolled his eyes in uh, the Run the Ropes group and the Everything Pro Wrestling group about it. I don't know what they're doing with this. And why would Private Party trust Matt Hardy again? I, it It's weird. That's a weird storyline. Like, I don't know. It's not for me. It's not for me. That's all I can say when it comes to it. Um, following up, we get, uh, the, the segment everybody, uh, wants to talk about. It's the national scissoring day. Scissors everywhere. Scissor me. Scissor me, daddy ass. Daddy chill. You, you don't know. You don't know what, what's going to happen with this, but the acclaim come out, cut a rap. They're in D.C. You know, there's some political jokes and everything within it. And um, they kind of do this whole big speech. Billy Gunn's doing the rockabilly dance. I'm like, what the hell is going on? And why is Billy Gunn the most over member of D-Generation X in 2022? Times are weird. I could have never predicted this, but I'm happy for everyone involved. I have loved the acclaim since the beginning i liked them even when they were on dark performing separately and i liked that they got put together as a team it works it's a money tag team um cray said matt hardy just needs to coach let's not forget the scissor party and we got people throwing up the fingers we got people throwing up the scissors in the chat i appreciate it um when it came down to this we all knew what this was they are about to do the big scissor finale and before they could here comes my man Swerve. Whose house? The original man who was yelling whose house? Swerve's house. And the people were still kind of kind of behind Swerve a little bit. They were rocking with him. I thought it was uh really good. I thought it was really good for him, the reaction and everything. And he came out and said, we don't need uh, another generation of kids being suspended. I, I literally just talked about this today, about the crotch chops with DX in elementary school. Do you know how many people I know who got suspended for doing the old... Uh, I have a little soundboard clip of it, but I'm pretty sure that'll get the video flagged, so I can't play that. But, dude, dude, is this, is this new sister thing going to be what gets kids in trouble? I'm sure somebody already has. But whatever. Swerve stops it, and he says that he's going to fight Billy Gunn next week on the microphone. And I like that when he ends his promo, he goes, you know, Rock always beats scissors. And he pulls a, a little stone. I wouldn't even say a little stone. A nice one that could break a window out of his pocket, and he's tossing it up in the air. And after he does that, well, lo and behold, who comes out but smart Mark Sterling, and he says, paper beats Rock. And he gets in the ring, and he says, you know, you guys should have me with you on this day. And eventually this leads to him getting the scissor me timbers. I think they should definitely do it like the Dudley boys do. They need to like slam, set up, look to the crowd, play it off. And then you kind of need the what up. So they definitely need the the like Billy Gunn comes and scissors him before. And then he drops the leg drop. That's how I would try to set it up. Maybe you got it. You can mess around with that. But Mark Sterling eats it. And then they they all do the big scissor at the end. Swerve kind of looks away like a hater. I like it. Swerve is money. This is going to be good. Going to be good, I think, uh, with Billy Gunn and Swerve. Billy Gunn is in phenomenal shape. When I'm like 50, I hope that I could even be half of what Billy Gunn looks like. Like the dude's in great shape. Uh, Billy Gunn at Raw for 25 years of DX, LOL. WWE is going to have their hands on the sensor button on Raw, DX 25th. Yeah, we got two words for you. And everybody is coming in. Man, I love Swerve. Uh, Billy won't be at DX25. He was cut out of the promo video on Raw. Yeah. I definitely got the tension in fifth grade for giving my friend a Stone Cold Stunner in retaliation for him giving me a DX chop. Them DX chops, man, they cause people their necks sometimes sick. <laughs> was good, brother. Happy to have you in here, man. Um, Yeah, that's hilarious. Uh, we get a promo for Dark Order going up against the Death Triangle. Trio's titles are on the line for Rampage. Madison Rain and Sky Blue are backstage talking about how wonderful things are. And lo and behold, it's an interruption. Waka, waka, waka. You never expected that, right? And Anna J and Tay Mello uh, come up and they say that they want a tag match for Rampage. That easy, that simple. You could have just made the match without even doing that, I think, at this point. 
Then at Battle of the Belts, Willow picks up a big victory and she says, you know what? I'm going to shoot my shot. I want a challenge for the TBS championship. And Jade and her posse roll up after and they're like, oh, no, you're not getting a shot at anything. And she's looking around and she says, well, maybe I'm the one that ends your streak. I think she's at 31. I can't remember if it's 31 or 38. But she says, maybe I'm the one that puts that loss on your record. I like it. You gave Willow the win so that she could kind of show off why she deserves to be champion for Battle of the Belts. We, we, we're we here. We're here. Maybe maybe she's the one to beat Jade. She is getting over. In that match before, Jamie Hayter's reaction, though, it was real. Um, Let me see here. Uh, how long before the scissoring thing is running to the ground? This was a bit much. I... It's it's still hot right now, man. The crowd was going ape shit for it. I mean, I can't say anything bad about it for that. Got in trouble for wearing a suck it shirt in school. <laughs> Everybody got in trouble for them WWE shirts, man. Wow, really, Fozzie the Bear? <laughs> That's your man's, huh, Nelson? <laughs> That's your Muppet, huh? Uh, pull the trigger and give Willow her win and the contract. Uh, cancel Rampage. Tay Mella and Annie J are AEW wrestlers. Uh, like they are at risk of fandangoing it. Could be. It's over though, man. If they're the number one selling t-shirt, you gotta ride the wave, man. You gotta ride the wave till the end. Um, next matchup for us to talk about here will be Roosh versus Hangman Page. I thought this one was gonna be a little bit more competitive than it was. Maybe it was kind of at a burnout moment in the show for me, but uh I thought this was a basic match, gave you what you thought you would get out of it. Uh Roosh and Hangman, they came out. They look good. I think that they both put on some good matches uh, recently. Private Party uh, afterwards comes out because Hangman gets the one with the buckshot lariat. Private Party come out afterwards, but it gets interrupted by John Moxley. He cuts a promo about their upcoming match in Cincinnati. Threw on the bangles, threw on the Kango. Like a bull or El Matador, the two are going to tango. Cameron, but uh, they, <laughs> they were uh, out here setting up the matchup for these two. Okay, Moxley basically like cuts him down on the promo. He even kind of tells him like, hey, like watch your mouth when you're talking about me. And in two weeks, I'm going to see you in Cincinnati. I think it's going to be a good match. I've always wondered what would happen when those two lock up. I still think it's Moxley's time, but this should be a match. Should be a match. I don't know if they're going to get crazy in this, but it's what it is. Nelson said, no, I'm more of an animal guy. (laughs) Everyone loves the acclaimed. Uh, Roosh, uh, good match. Roosh was looking badass. Roosh has been looking really good lately. I mean, I'm pretty sure that's why they offered him the contract. Let Roosh rock, though. He signed the contract. Hey, he can do it. Deanna said Mox isn't losing it, and I'm with you on that. I can't, I don't see that happening either. Uh, Six said, I don't know, man. I get the popularity of the catchphrase, but I, as a grown man, ain't saying scissor me daddy to nobody. <laughs> I do own the shirt, though, just not that one. <laughs> Do, 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 do. Um, we also have uh, next up Luchasaurus in action. And he comes out with Christian, who is still injured. And Luchasaurus literally beats my man Fuego del Sol up. Don't do this to my guy Fuego, all right? Fuego catches the meanest beat down, choke slam. He's done. He's good. <laughs> He's done. Burning hammer, kind of like the reverse AA attitude adjustment, whatever you want to call it. Luchasaurus pens him one, two, three. We're out of there. And before he could put down another beat down, I think he's going to toss him through the stage or whatever. Here comes Jungle Boy with the chair, hits Luchasaurus, gives him his back, nails him in the back. Jungle Boy says that he's going to beat Luchasaurus for this. He's going to break every finger in his body, his nose, whatever. Jungle Boy tries to cut a serious promo. Christian lets him know. And we get a match made for next week between them. Um, let's run down. First, let's go through Rampage. So on Rampage, you're getting the trios title match on Friday. You're going to get Death Triangle versus the Dark Order. You're also getting Josh Woods and Tony Nese versus the Varsity Blondes. Anna Jay and Tay Mello versus Sky Blue, Madison Rain, John Moxley, uh, Claudio, excuse me. Where was I? John Moxley, Claudio, and Wheeler Yuta versus Roosh and Private Party. Okay. We can, we can watch that one. The uh, next matchup we have is for Battle of the Bells. Jay Cargill versus Willow Nightingale. The ROH tag titles are on the line as FTR 
will take on the Gates of Agony with the Embassy. And we're also getting Pack versus Trent for the All-Atlantic Championship. Next week for Dynamite, when we review it on the show, they're going to be in Canada. Their debut in Toronto. Uh, we're getting Jungle Boy versus Luchasaurus, Billy Gunn versus Swerve Strickland, and for the ROH title, Chris Jericho versus Brian Danielson. It's gonna be that sounds like a heck of a, a lineup so far for the show. Um, let me see. Roosh and Bandito as a tag team. Sign me up. Bring Roosh's brother back, man. Let the homie come back. I don't know where he is or what he's doing. The power of the dragon zord. Bad dino entrance. Uh, I want that shirt. I'm going to wear it everywhere. <laughs> LOL. Someone check on Fuego. I'm giving uh, Jungle Boy his flowers. His promos are getting better. Agreed. Agreed. I've noticed it. Remember those vignettes on Lance Archer when AEW started? AEW should have invested in him. He could have been a top guy by now. <sighs> yeah, he's in, he's in the tough spot. He, always the bride. Uh, never the bride. Always the bridesmaid, though. For Archer, he gets he gets so close, and then they he usually takes the L. Uh, still no lockup. <laughs> Matt Lopez has the the timer out for him. He time time will tell what will end up happening with that. And then I guess we're at the point here for the main event: ROH Pure Champion Daniel Garcia and Brian Danielson team up to go against Chris Jericho and Sammy Guevara. Uh, Jericho shows the code of honor in the beginning, but he's still kind of disrespectful and loose with it. And Daniel Garcia begins to wrestle him and disrespects him. Uh, Brian Danielson then goes on a tear. He's jumping out the ring, drop kicking people, doing whatever. Uh, if you don't know, Brian Danielson's up there as like top five, one of the best ring of honor wrestlers of all time. He is crushing it. We get a pose from the Lesex gods, their, their usual pose from it. Daniel Garcia puts the boots to his uh, former mentor, Chris Jericho. Uh, the walls of Jericho gets locked in, and then Garcia is able to transition out into a sharpshooter. Um, they are going back and forth. Jericho and Garcia. Garcia is on top. Sammy breaks it up with a super kick. Uh, Sammy jumps off the top rope, gets caught into a submission hold. This gives Danielson enough time to put Jericho in the label lock. Jericho gives Danielson a a suplex, and the first time it didn't work. So once that didn't happen, you knew GG, it was a rap Rizzy for that. Um, he suplexes him through the table though to make sure it breaks so everybody's happy. Sammy hits the GTH. He wastes a lot of time going to the top shooting star press. Garcia gets the knees up, locks in the dragon slayer. He's not leaning back yet. And when the ref's distracted, Jericho hits Garcia with the ROH title. Garcia goes down. Sammy pins Garcia. For the win. This is what everybody was upset about that Sammy got into that whole whole shit with Andrade and he ends up getting the dub. It's what it is. Uh and that's how we go off the air. I guess maybe this is part of the storyline build to what we're we're getting to with all of this. But I don't know. I feel like the payoff's gonna have to happen next week, possibly. And I still Maybe I'm the weirdo here. I still feel like we're getting one of them horsemen beatdowns on uh, Brian Danielson. He's going to trust Garcia, and he's really suckering him in. Or he's going to be like, Jericho was right after he beat me last week. I shouldn't have been listening to you. This doesn't work, and he he's going to help stomp him in. I don't know. That's just my thoughts on it. You guys let me know what you think of the show tonight and your thoughts on AEW as a whole. Uh, we can get into this for about five more minutes, and then we'll we'll head on out here tonight. Archer and Eddie, uh, bridesmaids forever. Uh, he also spiked himself twice in a year, so it's scary with Archer. Yeah, he's got to be careful with uh, what he's doing. Can they announce this TV deal already? Uh, no, sick, because they're still negotiating for the other one. So I think WB, Warner Brothers, Discovery, I think they have a leg up right now because they're cutting costs everywhere too. The question is, do you want more AEW or do you want less? And I think they're trying to figure out, well – how well does this draw? What is Ring of Honor compared to this? You know, they're asking the same questions we are. And I think Tony, Tony's had, rumor has it, Tony's had offers for Ring of Honor already. If he just wanted a deal, he could have taken one. He's trying to get the best deal, though, for his company. And I get it. This is all about, you're trying to recoup some of the bread so that you can have more money to play around with. I get it. Uh, Ace said, just a matter of time before the top guys finally get their tag title match. I hope so, man. They've been number one contenders for a minute. 
two ROH titles in your AEW anniversary main event. Also, they made all the wrong calls on this one. Uh, I get I get it, have a bigger name as the face of the company, but uh, to get TV, but don't kill honor. Um, let me see here. Table wasn't very honorable. No selling for Brian. <laughs> Sammy shouldn't have gotten the pen. I can't see Brian losing either another another title match unless this is leading to a big match at an ROH pay-per-view. That's what I think it's going to lead to, though, Matt. Um, Ace is saying thumbs up tonight. What happened to Claudio and Kingston story? I think that's just kind of been a Twitter thing that they were building up. Maybe they'll eventually get there. I think that could be a pay-per-view match, maybe for full gear or maybe one for revolution. If they wanted to, there's a story there. If they wanted to get into it. Uh, Overall, the show was a banger overall. This dynamite was better than last week's, but still on the low end for me, 6.7 out of 10. Yeah, I'm I'm about right there with you, BJ. I would say like a 6.8 for me as well. If I had to pick EPW as always 10 out of 10. Thank you. Good, sir. Thank you. Sick. All I'm going to say about the Sammy situation is he was talking tough on Twitter. Where was that energy when Eddie pulled his card backstage? He sounded like a spokesperson for Feed the Children. Woo. Also, WBS to be asking who will be in ROH. Yes, they're going to want some bigger names, too. To Well, what's the draw? Why do we watch this instead of this show? Um, A said Dynamite was 7 out of 10. Cray's giving it 4 out of 10 tonight. He's giving it the Bret Hart treatment. Uh, 7.5 out of 10 from Deanna. I feel this was a seven, but EPW 10 out of 10. You guys are the best. You guys are the best. Um, I'm going to let you guys know right now. Don't consider this a full blown promise, but it might happen. I think on Saturday, we might do a live review of extreme rules after we might be able to, if not, it might even just be an audio version, but there will be some type of extreme rules review going up on, uh, saturday afterwards we also got bound for glory on friday too so that one i might do a quick audio review on the uh, podcast for and talk about it uh we on clash of the podcast we got to give away a free uh impact wrestling bound for glory pay-per-view show um shout out to everybody who was in there trying to get that that was appreciated by all of you guys as well uh, Friday is going to be a busy one. Yes, you've got Bound for Glory. You've got Rampage, Battle of the Belts, and SmackDown. And SmackDown's the go-home show to Extreme Rules. Rumors of The Fiend showing up. Lots can happen here. Um, Let me see here. Uh, I'll be back this weekend as well. BJ will be back in the house. BJ, I told him to take last weekend off so you can blame that one on me. I told BJ to relax, chill out. But just know when BJ is available, he's going to be uh, putting his show up on Fridays. Um, Definitely always fun to hear BJ and give his thoughts on things. I can't wait to hear what he thinks about all of this, too. Hope Extreme Rules isn't an extreme letdown. (laughs) Sick, you are funny. Uh, I can't wait to hear Bound for Glory. Uh, uh, Let's F and go with Extreme Rules live podcast. Yeah, we'll probably try to do one afterwards. With those, I just lucked out that uh, I'm going to be able to do that. So. We should be able to cover it, get on here. It's six matches, but we can probably run through it pretty quickly and uh, talk about it. Uh, I had a doozy of a week, so I appreciate it, brother. Nah, man, no. Nah. I just don't want anyone saying, like, where was BJ show, you know? BJ can do it when he wants, man. I appreciate the extra help, man. Uh, I hope everyone loves Adam Rose as the White Rabbit. If that happens, Matt, people are going to go off. So, listen, I'm going to end it on this note. AEW, I've appreciated you for the three years. The honeymoon period is over. It is time to uh, it's time to put on the gloves and do the work. Now, you got to create storylines. You got you got to put things and make people interested in things the right way. Uh, we got to end all the backstage beef and having it come to light tonight. If there's people who are trying to cause trouble and do all this stuff and cost you money, get them out of here. Get them out of here. Start implementing fines, too. There's ways to do it. Um, I just want AEW to be better. It's been a good thing for the wrestling business, and I want it to continue to be a good thing. Uh, I know all these situations are are going to be dictated by a lot of different things, especially partners you work with and everything else. But I want AEW to stick around. I can't go back to having one major company in the U.S. run thing for 20 years again. We cannot have that as a whole. But listen, guys, I love you all. I thank you all for joining me tonight. It is greatly appreciated. 
Uh, I know it's a late one, so we are out for myself and everyone associated with everything pro wrestling. We are out. We will catch you guys for Extreme Rules this weekend. One. Everyday pro wrestling, they can never be you. Listen to the podcast for the people. The best show that's here, so listen in. Let the knowledge begin. The opinions, the lesson, yes. By the fans, uh, for the fans, uh. Not many in this can understand, uh. This the podcast to show you who I am, uh. Conrad Cushman, the legend in the plans, uh. Please listen every day to the showcase. The opinions and knowledge that anyone can take. Showing you how it is done. Proving I am number one. What a legend becomes. This is now my time to show you that I am here. Uh, this podcast just to make it loud and clear. Uh, by the fans, uh, for the fans, uh, not many who's here can understand. Uh, everything pro wrestling, they can never be you. Listen to the podcast here for the people. The best show that's here, so listen in. Let the knowledge begin. The opinion and the lesson, yes. Everyday pro wrestling, they can never be you. Listen to the podcast for the people. The best show that's here, so listen in. Let the knowledge begin. The opinions, the lesson, yes.